We are here at the Startup Camp Switzerland and I'm standing next to Fali Duval who is yeah, the organizer of the Red Hearing and uh, he has a very good overview about uh, the startup scene in general but especially also about the Swiss startup scene. So please could you introduce yourself and yeah, go directly and uh, tell me your opinion about the Swiss startup scene. Please. Okay, well uh, again, Farley Duval, I manage uh, Red Herring's EMEA operations. Um, I'm not a journalist, I take care of all the business side. And what I really do, what that means, is uh, I attend a lot of events across Europe. I organize a couple of conferences. Uh, the Red Herring 100 for Europe is going on right now. Uh, we're taking submissions to determine our picks for the top 100 early stage firms from across the EMEA region. So pretty exciting. Now Switzerland, uh, I, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces here at Startup Camp. And in the three years that I've been living in Zurich, it seems that the number of entrepreneurs has continued to grow. Uh, even with the current downturn, I don't think it's really yet preventing want to be entrepreneurs from finding money or from launching companies. I think, you know, Switzerland is a fairly wealthy country, of course, um, and it's a little bit shielded from some of the cold realities of the world economy. Um, but I think even more important is finally some of the young people in Switzerland are, are starting to believe that it's okay to tell their parents that they want to be an entrepreneur and not to go work for UBS because look where working for UBS has gotten you now. It's not such a good place. Um, but there's also, uh, the young people are starting to be a little less afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. Now they still need to come a long way. You know, in Silicon Valley, to fail is actually a badge of honor. Everyone's happy to fail once, twice. In Europe and in Switzerland, it's still considered almost a career ender. So the last thing you want to do at 25 is have your career ended by a failure. Yeah. Well, you know, again, that's starting to change a little bit, but old habits die hard. So. Uh, what would you recommend? What, uh, yeah, in which way could the people change to make it more easier for them to accept failure? Well, you know, it's a cultural shift. It's not going to happen easily, and as long as things like education and having a an advanced degree and accomplishment you know while everyone values those things as more important than than hunger and drive then you're going to still fear failure mm -hmm. because there just seems to be a psychological link do you think that the yeah, economical crisis has a positive effect on that? Because uh, everybody can see that even the big companies are struggling right now, so that it makes it easier for a small company to allow themselves to struggle as well? Well, I think that's a good point. Um, obviously, if UBS and Pfizer and any of these you know, icons can fail or have to lay off people, it makes it a reality mm -hmm. uh, but beyond that it also forces the hand you know all those people who lose their jobs have to go out and do something mm -hmm. so maybe they start a new business they start to do something and not all of them are going to succeed mm -hmm. so failure becomes something that's a reality and we have to accept that it doesn't necessarily mean that you didn't try hard that you didn't do things right it's just something that happens and as soon as we get beyond that, then you know we can focus more on on success rather than preventing failure. Mm -hmm. Let's come back to the Swiss uh, startup scene. What do you observe? What the Swiss are doing very well, and which you would recommend as an example for other countries as well to maybe implement that things. Well, so some of the firms here at Startup Camp, like Amazi and Casabur and Walla, are getting some traction in the market. Uh, Doodle is actually right next to my office and they are expanding um, but they're all in different areas so I think the Swiss 
young entrepreneurs are branching into a lot of different directions, and that's actually great. There's not just one area. In Sweden, they're very heavy on communications. Finland the same because of Nokia in Finland and Ericsson in Sweden. In Switzerland, maybe uh, they haven't found their niche yet, but they're doing a lot of things quite well. So um, uh, I, I like what I see. Okay. And what about the Swiss politics? How uh, the, uh, do they support the startup scene? Well, so the Swiss politics uh, is in some ways uh, a bit like United States. The government stays out of the way with regards to a lot of things, but they're also doing a good job of contributing money and support with uh, some of the, the uh, groups like CTI, Venture Lab, Venture Kick, and uh, in the canton of Zurich, they're actually talking about starting a fund to help early stage entrepreneurs. So I think they're doing a pretty good job of staying out of the way when they need to be and coming in when they need to be. Uh, we'll ask me again in a year or so, and okay. hopefully I say the same. And uh, yeah, focusing again now on the red hearing, um, which points would qualify a startup to be recognized by the red hearing? Well, so red herring is looking for innovative firms that may be able to change the industry. And we really look at three industry areas. We have, of course, IT, but we also look at clean tech and life sciences. And uh, those are all areas where Switzerland has done quite well. And in fact, in our global 100 for 2008, Switzerland had five winners, mm -hmm. which is by percentage probably the highest of any country. So yeah. I applaud them there. Uh, in fact, they did a press release and made fun of Germany a little bit, so you might need to look at that. Yeah, okay, thank you. And uh, what would you give uh, other starters out there as a hint uh, for starting up now during that time? Well, you know, don't be afraid. Focus on what you do well and execute. Put together a good management team and then just go. Just go and you should go next to the Red Hearing Award happening in Berlin on uh, March 31st through April 2nd. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>